So here's a problem from an old AP exam. It's from back in 2006. It's a non-calculator question, and it deals with this table of values here. And so if you just kind of analyze what you have access to in the table, uh, it looks like we were measuring velocity every 10 seconds in time. And then it describes what the velocity is actually for in the problem statement. So we've got a rocket. It's got a positive velocity after being launched upward from an initial height of zero feet at time zero seconds. The velocity of the rocket is recorded at selected values of t from 0 to 80, as shown above. We've already kind of recognized that. And then in part a, it says find the average acceleration of the rocket on the interval from 0 to 80. And then we want to attach some units to that calculation. So if you want the average acceleration, uh, acceleration is the rate of change of velocity. And so it's, it's the derivative of velocity. And if we want an average rate of change. All we're going to do is, is we're going to do a, a regular old slope calculation. So we're going to take a difference in function values or y values, divide by a difference in t values. We're going to do that on the interval from 0 to 80. So we have 80 minus 0 in the denominator and then v of 80, which is 49, minus v of 0, which is 5 in that numerator. That'll simplify to 11 twentieths. Uh, you can leave your answer like this. It does ask for units of measure, so we're looking at feet per second as the units that went into this numerator here, divided by seconds as the units that went into those values in the denominator. So we're looking at feet per second per second or feet per second squared. Part B is asking us to interpret what something represents within this situation. So it asks us to use correct units and explain the meaning of this definite integral in terms of the rocket's flight. And then it asks us to use a midpoint ream on sum, three subintervals of equal length to approximate the value of it. So when you integrate a rate of change and velocity is the rate of change of position, the result for that definite integral calculation is going to be how much change happened for the function that this is a rate of change for across the limits. And so this is the rate of change of position, V of T is. So when I integrate that rate of change, I end up determining how much the position of the rocket has changed by on the interval from 10 to 70. Uh, I could have said this a little bit differently here because it does tell us that we have a positive velocity for this rocket. Uh, so if, if this was a situation where some velocities were positive, some were negative, then we definitely have to interpret this definite integral as a change in position. Uh, in this case, it could also be a distance traveled. That would be an acceptable result. And, and the reason for that is because velocity is always positive. If you always have positive velocity, you're always just going to be accumulating, 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 never subtracting off of anything that was negative. And so this would be a total distance the rocket traveled from second 10 to second 70. Or a total change in position is probably a safer bet, or excuse me, change in position from 10 to 70 is a safer bet because that covers situations where some of the velocities do become negative. If we want to estimate the value of this with a midpoint Riemann sum, this is actually a little bit tricky because a midpoint Riemann sum is, is going to require us to know the value of the function at the midpoint of each subinterval. And so I, I took a minute to graph these velocity values here. So I plotted uh, the ordered pairs that we had access to in the table, and I realized that they wanted me to use three subintervals of equal length, ranging from 10 to 70. And so if I'm going from 10 to 70, something that's 60 units long, and I'm cutting that into three pieces of equal width, each piece is going to have a width of 20 units. And you see that my delta x here was constant. Uh, and so I, I did rather than 20 times my first height plus 20 times my second height, I kind of went with a factored form for my midpoint Riemann sum. So I factored out the common width of 20. And then what about the heights of these rectangles? Well, if, if delta t is 20, the midpoint of this first subinterval is smack dab in the center of it, which is the, the t value of 20. So the velocity at 20, which you can get from the table, it's 22, can't really see the table right now, but v of 20 is, is 22. That's going to be the first height of my rectangle. My next rectangle goes on this stretch of the x-axis, and the midpoint there is 40. And so that's going to be what I use to generate the height of my next rectangle. And then my last rectangle sits on the stretch of the t-axis from 50 to 70, midpoint 60. So that's going to be what I use to generate the height of my last rectangle. And similarly, I, I pulled these values from out of the table for v of 40 and then v of 60. 
you can try to simplify this if you want to. It gets kind of messy without a calculator. So I just left this one in an unsimplified form and it did ask for some units there. So the units of this are feet, V of T are feet per second. The units of DT are seconds. Feet per second times seconds gives us an answer that's measured in feet. And, and that's what it makes sense. The change in position is going to be a change uh, in, that's measured in feet. Last part of this is the trickiest part, lengthiest part. They talk about a new rocket. So rocket B is also launched upward. They give us an acceleration function for rocket B. It's measured in feet per second per second. So units seem to sync up with what we have unit wise for rocket A. At zero seconds, the initial height of the rocket is zero feet. The initial velocity is two feet per second. Which of the two rockets is traveling faster at time 80 seconds? Explain your answer. So what I realized right away is if I'm trying to say which of these is traveling faster at t is equal to 80, I want to know which one has the bigger speed at that time. Well, the speed of rocket A at 80 we can take right out of the table. Speed is just the absolute value of velocity, absolute value of 49, gives us 49 feet per second for the, the velocity and also the speed that rocket A is traveling at, at t is equal to 80. Then we needed to do some work to figure out what the speed of rocket B was at that same time. And so what I realized was I needed to know the velocity of rocket B at t is equal to 80. And so I realized that since I have the acceleration function for rocket B, I can take the antiderivative of that acceleration function to work backward to a velocity function for rocket B. Now the, the integral was a little bit tricky because we do have this inner function sitting right here. So I did have to let you equal that inner function. It was actually kind of nice though, because we didn't pick up any new factors or anything. Uh, du was going to be a direct replacement for dt and now that i notice my work here i didn't even make that replacement appropriately this was it's going to look a little ugly since i'm doing it with a mouse but this was supposed to be a du in that spot so du is a direct replacement for dt what's the antiderivative of this well i copied the three into my antiderivative add one to that power gives me one half divide by one half is the same as multiplying by two over one simplify a little bit back substitute I do have a constant of integration that I had to account for here. This was an indefinite integral, and I had to figure out what the value of that constant of integration was if I hoped to figure out what the velocity of rocket B was at t is equal to 80. And so I used what I underlined back here, the initial velocity of rocket B is 2 feet per second. So I knew, hey, this is my velocity function right here with the constant of integration that hasn't yet been solved for. So I realized that my velocity is two. So I put two in for velocity at the initial value of time, which is zero. And so I put zero in for T. Uh, quick calculation, let me realize that this was just six. And then if I solved for C, I got negative four for C after subtracting six from the two. And so I didn't have enough room on this screen, so I went to a new screen. So what is the velocity of rocket B at time 80? Well, here's the general formula for the velocity of rocket B at any time. What's the velocity at time 80? It's kind of nice because we get 81 under the root, which obviously is 9. Uh, do the multiplication, do the subtraction, you get 50. So the velocity of rocket A at 80 is 49. Velocity of rocket B at that same time is 50. Rocket B is just a little bit faster than rocket A at this moment.